Alright, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss uh, further into approximate integration. And now look at the proof for the midpoint rule error bound formula that I went over in my earlier videos. Basically, the recap on the formula of the error bound estimate for using the midpoint rule for approximation of definite integrals. We have here, this is the error bound for using that midpoint rule. Uh, error bound for it is, uh, so suppose we have a number k, which is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the second derivative of uh, f of x for the interval where x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. Then we have the absolute value of the error using the midpoint rule is gonna be less than k times b minus a cubed divided by 24 times uh, yeah, n squared. And again, like I showed in my earlier video, this is uh, less than equal to, well, one half of the trapezoid rule uh, estimate right there. Yeah, so it's one half of the error using the trapezoid rule. And again, where n is the number of sub intervals using the approximation, and k is just any number greater than or equal to the absolute value of the second derivative, the lower, the more accurate the error bound. Yeah, because you can make this infinity, because infinity is greater than the second derivative, but you're just gonna have a giant error estimate, which is not useful for anyone. So the lower, the better, and the lower one is basically, the lowest you can is usually the highest, or actually it is, it's just the highest um, value of the second derivative for this interval. Now let's look at the proof. So the first thing we have to do is basically recall how uh, the midpoint rule approximation is. So when we recall it, let's graph this out. So let's say you have a graph like this, y, x, here's a random function. This is from a, and this is from all the way to b, and this is our f of x. So now let's uh, start drawing our intervals. Let's say we have um, n intervals and then we're using the midpoint. So let's say intervals even space out like this. Okay, this is roughly even out. And then we also pick the center point of each single one of them. So this is a one of the intervals and this is again center point. That's the idea of the center point, or the midpoint rule, like that. So we keep doing this, uh, and then we get, well, like this, and then this something like this cut through, and this last one here is like that. And again, these are, so, yeah, so the, basically these are n intervals right here, so there is, so the distance right here, I'll just write this, there's n intervals, And again, so then this each one of these distances is going to be are going to be our delta x, which equals two. Let's write this in black. Uh, so delta x equals two, which is b minus a. That's the full length. Then divide by n. So everything is equal distance across. So when we look at it, just the any individual, yeah, any individual sub interval such as this one here. So let's let's look at this right here at this point. This is our x, uh, let's call this xi, and then left of it right here is gonna be our xi minus one. So the center point right here, we're gonna call this, this is our xi, and then star, I mean uh, underline above it, or overline right there. So that's the center point. So what this means is that the estimate, um, yeah, we'll call this m of n, this equals two, yeah, the summation of from i equals to, yeah, i equals to one up to n. So, yeah, so up to n, then we have right here f of, well, this is the height right here of this one. So that's gonna be f of x i center point. So x i center point, and then times by our delta x. Where basically the center point right here, x i star, that just equals to all the average of these two. So that's just going to be x i, let's go minus one plus x i divided by two. So that's what it equals to, and you can plug that in. So basically now let's look at the error of using the midpoint rule. So that's well shown below. I'll write it down. So what we have, if we're looking at the integral from a to b of f of x. Uh, dx. So again, this is the approximation. There's the there's going to be an error obviously from this fx. 
So this equals to our approximation mn and then plus we'll call this em error. So this is our error. Solve this around. We have em equals two. Well, this is going to be a b f of x dx minus our approximation. And this is our error. So now to get a better idea of well how to find the maximum value of this error or an estimate for it, let's look at a single interval. So let's just uh, zoom in on an interval. So let's say this is the function like that. Then we have over here, this is, we'll call this part xi. So uh, as different from the other one, we had xi minus one. Let's go xi and xi plus one, just so it'll be easier when we write it later. So we'll just start off like this, different naming convention, but it's the same thing. So again, this is our f of x. This is our subinterval. So what we're going to do is try to find an estimate for, well, an individual subinterval, and then obviously sum that up for uh, the n intervals. So let's draw the center point, which is going to go straight down like this. This is x, i, uh, overline like that. Then draw this across. Now we have, there is our box right here. So this is our estimate right here, and the value for this, we'll call this, uh, yeah, this uh, first, this height right here is m, I mean f of x i star, and again, yeah, this full length right here, this is uh, x i plus one minus x i, which equals to, well, just delta x, and in this case, we'll call it uh, h. So I'll call this a just to make it easier. Yeah, just to make it easier uh, when we're writing out the proof. So now this this sub interval right here, we'll call this the estimation m, yeah, m i. So instead of m n, this is m i. This equals two. Well, this is just the area of a rectangle right here. So that's going to be h times it by f of x i like that. So now what I'm going to do is actually uh, write this in terms of uh, x i. That's why I didn't write x i minus one, just to be easier to write it. So we know that well, this this difference right here is h over two. So that's just divided by two. So what this means is x i center point equals to well x i plus h over two. So writing this in terms of x i, this equals to h like that. So m i equals h times f of x i plus h over 2. So this will make it easier when we start proving it. Yeah, so now that we have this approximation for just a subinterval using this midpoint rule, now if we integrate by parts twice, we will be able to get, well, integral containing the second derivative f of x. And again, note that in, what I'm going to do right now is also break the integral into two parts so that we have h over 2 in the integral because we want to make it similar to this approximation mi if possible. And you'll see it as I uh, yeah, this will be more clear as I go through it. So the integral, yeah, so we're integrating this, again, this subinterval, we're integrating from xi to xi plus one, xi to xi plus one of f of x dx, this equals two. Well, actually, before I get it equal to, I wanna utilize this h over two uh, stuff there. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, first I'm gonna change this, so let t equals two x, minus xi. So I'm just using substitution to rewrite how this looks so that in this case d of dt equals to well just dx and if we rearrange this x is equal to well t plus xi. So you'll see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get rid of these xi's and, and deal with h instead. So at, yeah, at uh, x equals 2 yeah, add x equals to xi, so that's the first um, yeah, first point we're integrating from. So xi, we have t equals two, so it's again, we get zero. So xi, which is this xi minus xi equals to zero. So that's the idea. And then at x equals to xi, yeah, xi yeah, plus one. So at this point we have now t equals two, xi plus one minus xi, which again, that's just our h. So this equals to h. 
So what we end up having is integral from zero to h of now we have f of x, now this is f of t plus xi dt. Now to make it even uh, simpler, what I'm going to do is, well, let f of t plus xi yeah, equal to g of t, just to make it all nice and tidy. So what we get now is integral from 0 to h of g of t dt. Yeah, so this is just the substitution. And now what I'm going to do is break it up into two parts and then start using integration by parts. So what we get now is integral from 0 to h over 2 of g of t dt plus integral from h over 2 to h of g of t dt. So now let's look at by parts for this first one right here. We'll call this part here number 2, the second part of the integral. So now this one here by parts what we get similar to my proof for the trapezoidal rule of error bound what we get right here is well let yeah let uh, in this case we're going to have u equals to g of t so that du is equal to g prime of t dt and our dv equals to well just dt and now the integral of this what we get is well integral of dv equals to if this is going to be uh, yeah, integral of dt is just t, but again, we're going to add a constant, we'll call this 1, and you could, uh, this is just a constant, and you could do this, you can see my earlier video on integration constants, and how you could uh, basically have, a, you could write it in any way, and even use integration by parts, have different constants, they're all going to have the same answer, because they end up canceling out, but this is useful for trying to re re rewrite a a uh, equation like an integral into a form we want which is in, in, to make it look like our approximation we're, but we won't be changing anything we're just making it look like it but then we'll, we'll just have uh, then the other parts of the integral will be different to make it you know fit so we have this and also make sure to watch that earlier video it's very interesting so what we have right now again integration by parts you have u dv equals to uv minus v du so now that we have these, all these uh, four items right there, so integral from uh, 0 to h over 2 g of t dt yeah, equals 2. Now we have, well, uh, u, which is g of t, times it by our, our this one right here, integral of dv. Yeah, integral of dv, again, that equals to v equals to this. So that's our v times by t plus c1, and now we subtract integral from 0 to h over 2 of, plug this in again, plus 2 c, t c1, and then this is going to be, um, this is now the du, which is g of t dt. So now that we have this, we, oh again, this is from 0 to h over 2. Now that we have this, we're going to do by parts again. So let's do this by parts. Again, so in this case, we're going to have, again, our u equals 2, g prime of t, so that our du equals 2, well, the second derivative, gt, g double prime of t dt. And then our dv now is going to be equal to t plus c1, dt. Now the integral here, we're going to have v equals to, well, integral of this, this is going to be, I'll just write this dv equals 2. And now what I'm going to do is, well, this is going to be t squared over 2 plus c1 uh, t. And again, we're going to add a constant similar to my uh, trapezoidal proof, so we're going to constant c2. And now notice this, what I'm, actually I'm not going to call this C2, I'm going to call this C star because I'm going to rearrange this to make it just look a bit neater. So what I'm going to do is uh, complete the square first. I'll multiply this over, over 2. So we're not changing anything. This equals 2t squared plus 2c1t over 2 plus C star. So now what I'm going to do is complete the square just to make it neater, complete the square. 
So what we're going to do is, yeah, because you learn about this more in my video link below on completing the square. So we have t, if you notice here, t plus c1 squared. That's just going to be equal to t squared when you expand, plus 2 times t c1, and then plus c1 squared. So this has everything but this minus, but the c1 squared. So we can just plug this inside and then subtract a c1 squared. So our v equals 2 t plus c1 squared, oh, and then minus c1 squared. So we're not changing anything. 2 and then plus c star. And now this equals 2 t plus c1 squared minus c1, yeah, this is over 2, over 2 plus c1 star. Now this, this is still a constant, because this is just a constant squared divided by 2 added to a, well, c star, another constant. This is all constant, and we'll call this, well, equaling to c2. So what we end up having is v equals to t plus c1 squared over 2 plus c2. So there's our constant. So now what we do is, we'll throw this all inside. I'll drag this down here. Yeah, and what we get now is, again, I'll write this all together, 0 to h over 2 of gt dt, at g of t dt equals 2. Now we write the first one here, gt t plus c1. And then uh, write this, uh, this is t plus c1. And then this is from 0 to h over 2. And then subtracted by, and now what we'll do is, well, we'll write this in a block. This is going to be the, our v times it by our u. And our u, in this case, g prime t. And our v is this one here. So we get t plus c1 squared over 2 plus c2. Put the bracket, and then g prime of t. And now what we do is, this is from 0 to h over 2. And and again, yeah, so now this is from this. And now we have to subtract. But again, since we already have a subtraction side, we'll take this out. And now we'll, we'll put a positive right here. Because, again, in the by parts, you have this minus. But since there's already a minus in this part, uh, yeah, that cancels out. So, and now what would we add is from the integral, so we add this positive, so be negative, positive, they just switch, 0 to h over 2 of now, this is going to be our v, which is going to be t plus c1 squared plus c2, and then put bracket, I'll put a better bracket, and then times it by g double prime of t dt, so that's our du, and now that we have this, yeah, now that we have this, we could do the exact same thing and write it for, well, the other one. The other part of the integral, or the second part right here. And that one's going to be exactly the same method. So similarly for the second part of the integral, we could follow the exact same process to get it to get. And actually here, I just copied and pasted this over here, just moved it to make it, you know, less uh, wide, some more compact. So, yeah, so what we get is now integral from h yeah, h over 2 to h of gt dt equals 2. Now we write, well, this first part, but now we add, well, instead of c1, it's going to be c3. So it's going to be gt times t plus c3, integral from h over 2 to h, and then we subtract here. This is going to be t plus, we'll call this again, c3. And then two divide, play a, divided by two plus c four. So instead of c two, it's c four. So I'll be constant there because it's it's exact same integral but just different uh, h over two to h and different constants. And again, this is from yeah, this is from zero. I mean not zero. H over two to h. Okay, so now we have that. And then the last part. This is this integral plus integral from h over 2 to h of now t plus c3 squared over 2 plus c4. Then g double prime of t dt. 
Alright, so now that we've gotten these two formulas, or, or uh, when we add them up, it's just a, the, the total uh, formula for the integral of the subinterval. So now we want the terms containing g of t to appear like the midpoint approximation, and the terms containing yeah, containing the first derivative to disappear, i.e. equal to zero, so that basically all the error will be just on the uh, second uh, interval terms. So, and again, we could try to select C1, C2, C3, and C4, those constants, such that this is the case. This is so the error, again, will be entirely in, in terms, yeah, containing the second derivative uh, g double prime of t. And again, note in my last video, I went over in detail how integrals have infinite number of ways of writing the integral because of the extra integration constant that can always be applied. So we could choose whichever values of the, of the constants that we want to work with because the constants, well, they actually did, they just cancel out and results is always the same, doesn't matter what they are. But we're doing it just so that we could make uh, one of the terms appear to have the trapezoid, I mean the midpoint rule approximation. So for the g of t terms, we want them to add up to, so let's just add these up, because again, these are additions here. So this part here, and combined with this part here, and again, we want these to equal to, when we go back to approximation, h times, well, f of xi plus h over two. And then recall that we have f of t, yeah, f of t plus xi equals to, well, g of t. So this means, well, when you plug in, yeah, t is h over 2. So again, this equals 2 h times it by g of h over 2. So that's what that equals to. So we'll just write this out. So we want these two terms to add up. So g of t, and now we have t plus c1 from 0 to h over 2 plus, write this better, plus g of t, and now we have t plus c3 uh, from h over 2 to h, and we want this all to equal to h times g of, well, h over 2. So we'll see how this happens. So when we add these all up, we get uh, here, we'll just expand this out, plug in these values in, g of h over 2, plug that in, and then this is h over 2 plus c1. Yes, c1, and then when you plug in the 0, so g of 0, and then this is going to be, well, c1, we plug in 0 in there. And now we have to add, now plug in this part, g of t, which is put the g of h, and then, yeah, we have here h plus c3, and then subtracted by, plug in this h over 2 there, g of h over 2, and then we have h over 2, and then plus c3. And again, we want this all to equal 2 h times g of h over 2. So now to do this, well, we have to first, we, well, we always have to cancel out this g of 0. There's g of h's, h over 2's, but there's a g of 0 and g of h is not included here, so we want to cancel these out. So let's try, uh, try again, uh, c1 equals to 0, so this goes to, z this goes to 0, and c3 equals to, well, um, negative h, so that this goes to 0. So h minus h. So what we get is g of h over 2 times it by h over 2. The c1 cancels. This is gone. This is gone. And then we're left with here minus g of h over 2. And then there's a h over 2 minus h. And again, so what this gets here, this becomes uh, h over 2 minus h. That's just, well, that's just to be negative h over 2 negative, and this becomes positive, so this equals to g, let's write this here, g of h over 2, h over 2, and then this negative h over 2 becomes positive, plus g of h over 2, h over 2. And again, this equals to the addition of these two, this is just becomes h over 2, This they add up and they cancel, so this becomes g of h over 2, 
times h and again that is exactly what we wanted this is equal to our m i and this is exactly what we wanted so now what we want to do is we'll select c2 and c4 to eliminate the g uh, t uh, terms or the first derivative uh, yeah, first derivative terms because that's not what's inside our well in our error bound approximation just has uh, g double prime not the g prime so when we look at it we go over to this part now so this this part right here and add it up with this right here so again these are both yeah both uh, negative sign right here so when we add these up and then this has to equal to zero because we're trying to cancel them out so we have negative and this is going to be uh, t plus c1 squared over 2 plus c2. And this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be now from, and this, again, this is a g prime of t. This is from 0 to h over 2. And then minus, now we have t plus c3 squared over 2 plus c4. And then this is g prime of t. And again, this is all from, uh, this is going to be from h over 2 to h. And now we want this to equal to 0. So then we need to select those. And we know what z c1 is. That's going to be 0. And c3 is negative h. So plugging these inside, we get negative. Yeah, negative right here is overall negative. Uh, then this is going to be, well, t, which is h over 2, we're plugging in, plus c1, that's a 0, that's 0, and this is, well, negative h. So, yeah, actually, I'll just write that over here. So erase this, this is plus 0, so we get t squared, now this is going to be negative h. So that we have that, so this is plug this in, h squared, h over 2 squared divided by 2 plus, well, c2, and then this is going to be g um, h over 2, put this like this, h over 2, and then subtracted by now, plug in the 0, we get minus, and then we have it as yeah, let's plug this in. So C2 is when you plug in 0, that's become just C2. This cancels out. So now what we get yeah, is times it by G T. I mean, G T is 0. G prime of T is 0 like that. And now what we have, put this all into a negative sign like that, minus, and again, we have this part here. Plug in the H. Those cancel goes to 0. So we'll just have C4 G prime of H. And then we plug in the H over 2. So minus, plug in this H over 2. We have H over 2 minus H squared divided by 2. And then this is going to be ball plus C4. And then we have this G prime of T. So we have G show if it's still inside yeah never mind it's over here then we plug this in g prime of h over 2 so again we want this all to equal to 0 so let's see what we have simplifying this further what we get is um, yeah is going to be negative h over over 2 this is going to be yeah this is 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 so negative Eight. I'll just keep this in like this, C2, and then we have this G prime of H over 2, minus, and then I'll put this minus out, so positive, C2, H prime of 0, and then we have a minus right here, C4, H prime of H, and then this is going to be a plus here, and this is going to be, well, over here, this is, um, yeah, this is going to be, well, again, negative h over 2, those inside of it. And then when you square it, this equals to, well, just h over 2 squared. So that's going to be, well, the same part as we have here, h squared divided by 8. So we have plus h squared divided by 8 plus c4 
And then we have this g prime of h over 2. And again, this we want it equal to 0. So as you see here, this has a negative sign. So that's negative, and this has a positive. And again, these are the exact same thing. C, this is h squared divided by 8 plus c4 times g prime over h over 2. So, so the only requirement is, in this case, c2 has to equal to c4. So they need to equal to it. And again, no, that's to cancel this part. But as you, if you look over here, uh, this we want these gone. So what we could do is just, well, set this equal to 0. So we want those all gone. So this equals to 0 right there. So what we get, everything cancels. And then this is all right. And thus, what we finally have is the integral now from 0 to h of g of t dt, this equals 2, 0 to h over 2, g of t dt, plus integral of yeah, h of 2 to h of g of t dt, I'm just writing it for completeness sake, and now what we have is, all we're left with is this is mi, this goes to 0, and now we're left with these two integrals right here, this and this part here. And again, all the constants are equal to 0, c1 to 0, c2 and c4 is 0, except our c3 is negative h. So we could take that into account. This is the only thing that's going to be there. Everything, all the other constants are going to be 0. So this equals 2 h times by g of h over 2. Yeah, and then plus here the integral from 0 to h over 2 of, we have t plus, well, c1, that's just going to be 0 squared. And then plus c2 is also 0 g of double prime of t dt. And then we have, well, the last part plus. Uh, 0 to, I mean not 0, h over 2 to h of, now we have t minus h, this is our c3, divided by 2, and then our c4 is 0, so we just leave it at that, g double prime of t. So this is our mi, and now our error is this part right here, so em, and we'll call this i. And now recall that we know that, well, g of t equals 2, this is just f of t plus xi. So when we plug those back in, what we get all over here is equal to h times g over h over 2 plus integral from 0 to h over 2, t squared over 2, and then we have f of t plus xi. This is now dt plus h over 2 h of, now we have t minus h squared 2 f of double prime, of the double prime, uh, t plus xi dt. So now that we have this, so now what we know, that again, this is the error. So for each xi is going to be different. This is again error uh, emi. And now thus for the total error, we just need to, well, sum up to n intervals. This is just one subinterval, so em is equal to, em is equal to e, yeah, which equals, again, total error, we'll call that total error, equals to em, we'll call the 0, plus em 1, plus etc., plus all the way until we get to em, and then we'll go this n minus 1. Again, because we started from 0, this is n intervals. And again, that's n intervals, and then recall that the uh, naming conventions we had, where we had x i plus 1. So when we plug in this in there, we get x n minus 1 plus 1 equals to x n. So again, then this is the last point is the x n point which is well equal to b, which is equal to the interval b. And the leftmost is x0, which equals to a. So it goes from the leftmost all the way to the rightmost, and that's why we have this n minus 1 there. So what this means is em is equal to, and now we plug those inside 
this part right here where this xi changes. That's the only thing that changes. So that's the only thing and then both of these as well, this xi. So would we get this equals to integral from 0 to h over 2 of t squared over 2. And now we have, yeah, this is going to be f double prime of t plus yeah, t plus x 0 and then plus this is h over 2 to h t minus h and then this is squared right here f double prime of t plus x 0 dt dt right here and then we keep adding it up all the way until we get x1, x2 keep going on and on until we get right here the last one 0 to h over 2 t squared over 2 f double prime of t plus x and minus 1 dt then plus right here the last the part of it h over 2 h t minus h squared over 2 f double prime of t plus x and minus 1. And then uh, again we could even simplify this further by writing this into two integrals because again the only thing that's changing is this and as, as again that, that. So we could take out this constant term and then uh, put it all into two integrals. So this equals 2 uh, integral from 0 to h over 2 t squared over 2 and then put a bracket f double prime of t plus x zero plus etc plus etc all the way until we get t plus x and minus one dt and then plus the second part h over two over h this is going to be t minus h squared over two and then bracket and f, of, f of t plus x0 plus etc plus and then we keep going on and on t plus uh, x n minus 1 dt yeah so now if we suppose yeah that there is a number k that greater than or equal to the maximum of the absolute value of the second derivative within this interval from uh, between x equals a to x equals b then we can get an estimate for the maximum error. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we have a k greater than or equal to the absolute value of the second derivative f of x for, yeah, for a is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b, then in this case, and again, recall here that, well, x just equals to t plus x i. So then these are all just different x values. Yes, these are all just x values right here. So what we'll do right here is, when we look at above here, let's say that if, if k is greater than or equal to all these, then what we could do is, well, let's just take the absolute value of all these, or basically show that this entire thing right here, this is has to be, well, less than, and then if we look at the absolute max, if we're saying, this is greater than any uh, any of these or equal to any of these uh, values or the absolute value of them so then we're saying is all of this inside is going to be less than or equal to n times it by k because there's n of these so every single one here is less than or equal to k less than or equal to k and again same thing with uh, these above here so less than or equal to k, etc. So then all the total here what we get is less than or equal to and k. Let's so write these neater. So this right here is less than or equal to n times k. So what that means is we could put these all down here and say that the absolute value of the error, e yeah, e m right here is gonna be less than or equal to, and again now we're taking an absolute value. And now we're saying, well, this is equal to, it's going to be less than this right here. Because we know that every one of these is going to be less than or equal to k. So the, the absolute value, this is, again, at a maximum. So we're going from 0 h over 2. And now we're simplifying this all to 
n k dt. Then again, plus the integral from h over 2 to h. This is going to be t minus h squared, squared n k dt. We'll put this around. So this is, yeah, so this is the absolute max that we can uh, get. And yeah, so basically this is all going to be, or this absolute value error is less than this values right here. So now what we could do is take these n k's out, and then what we will get is absolute value, or just write this part right here. This part right here equals 2, and now we have n k integral from 0 to h over 2, t squared over 2, dt plus integral from um, h over 2 to h t minus h squared over 2 and then there's going to be dt and then so we have that now we now we just start solving our integral right here this is t squared over 2 and k this is going to be t3 over, well, 3 times 2 is 6. And this is from, I'll put this like, this is from uh, 0 to h over 2. And again, same thing. Oh, why is it going to the left all the time? Plus, now we have this part right here, t minus h. Yeah, t minus h cubed, putting it up, and then put the divide by 3 times 2 is going to be 6. And then this is from h over 2 to h. So we have all this. This equals to finally uh, n k. Plug this inside. h cubed divided by 2 cubed is going to be 8. 2 times 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, and that's going to be, I mean, yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 is be 4 times 2 is 8 times 6. And then put in a 0, that's a 0. So we get this plus now, plug in this h, those cancel. So we're left with 0 minus, yeah, 0 is on the top. And then minus now, we have h over 2 minus h cubed over 6 right here. And again, this part right here, that equals to negative h over 2. And then negative h over 2 uh, cubed, that just equals to, well, negative and then h over 2 cubed. So we'll have a negative and then this will be the exact same thing as over here. This equals to n k h cubed over 8 times 6 plus there's a this is going to be negative but then there's a positive sign here so we make it well positive plus and it's exact same uh, figures right here this is going to be h cubed divided by 2 cubed which is 8 times 6 8 times 6 add these up we get n k times it by uh, 2 over 8 times 6 Yes, like that, and then this becomes 1 over 4, so this is 4 times 6 is equal to 24. Equals nk h3 divided by 24, and again, recall, yeah, recall that um, h, that just equals to, well, is our delta x, b over a divided by n, which equals again delta x. So we could plug this inside. What we get now is e of uh, m, absolute value is going to be less than or equal to n k. Now we have b minus a cubed divided by 24. And there's a n right here, n cubed. These cancel, this equals to, yeah, th this equals to finally, I'll write this all down, h m less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed, and now we have a 24n squared. And there is finally our estimate, is exactly what we were trying to prove. And similar to the proof the, of the trapezoidal rule error bound, our deri derivation of the error bound lets us see some weaknesses in it. First of all, the value of f prime of uh, double prime of x 
can vary from interval to interval. This means that some values are much lower than the k value which we impose. So we impose the maximum possible value. And some uh, f double prime of x values may be negative and some positive. So there could be cancellation among these terms. This means that the actual error may be much less than this estimate. So this is a really high, this may be a really high estimate for some functions and some intervals. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you follow along this pretty extensive proof video, but it's yeah, pretty interesting and again util utilizes that integration constants of integrals. Make sure to watch my earlier video which I dive deeply into uh, why that is. Well, we could just add anything we want. Anyways, that's all for today. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math. E